Hello and welcome to this video on using the new Ban in a Box for Windows DAW plugin, specifically using it in Cubase. With Ban in a Box 2019 for Windows, we've introduced a plugin version of Ban in a Box that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Ban in a Box that can be used right inside your favorite DAW without having to open the actual Ban in a Box application. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Ban in a Box and the plugin installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin in Cubase. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate it in many other DAWs, such as Reaper, Pro Tools, Cakewalk, Studio One, and many more. In this video, we'll first look at a quick and easy way to get started using the plugin. We'll also go through some of the technical aspects, such as the installation, locations of the plugin on your computer, and some settings within the plugin. Then we'll look at different ways you can use the plugin, including adding Band in a Box tracks to an existing project you're working on. And throughout the video, I'm going to try and use a variety of different Band in a Box styles, so you'll get a sense of some of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, R&B, or any style you can think of, there's something for you in Band in a Box. So what we're listening to right now are some great funk tracks played in Cubase that we created with the plugin. Everything that you're hearing right now in Cubase was created by the Band in a Box plugin simply by typing in these chords, and you can enter any chords in any key, then we picked this funk style and generated the tracks. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you just how we got these great sounding tracks. So here we are with a blank Cubase project. There aren't even any tracks or anything here yet. In order to use the plugin, you need to find it in the media rack at the right under VST Instruments Other which you can then drag to the tracks list area, which creates an instrument track where the plugin resides and it also opens the plugin. So this is the Band in a Box plugin. It's sizable, so I'll make it bigger. And now we have a blank chord chart. This area here is for the different instruments in the style and is currently blank because we don't have a style loaded yet. Here's where you can pick a style. Here you can set various musical elements such as the key, time signature, etc. And there's a spot for a song title and various menus we'll look at later. What we basically need to do in order to get some tracks is pick a style and enter some chords, not necessarily in that order. So I'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of F and I'll start entering some chords. F7 at bar 1 and I'll leave that for 4 bars. Maybe A flat 7 at bar 5 and B flat 7 at bar 7. I'll use a handy shortcut, K8, to copy the last 8 bars. I'll also add a part marker at bar 9 to outline the form of the song, and that means the drums will play a fill in the bar right before that part marker. At bar 17 I'll add a part marker as well, but I'll click a second time to make it a B part marker, which means the drums will change what they're playing at that part. And I'll enter G minor, then C minor at bar 19, G minor at bar 21 again, and then C7 at bar 23. I think that's good. I'll change some of the elements up here. I'll make the end bar 24, but I'll actually end on an F chord. And I'll change choruses to four, so this entire thing will repeat four times. So now we can select a style, either by clicking in the select a style area, or by going to the select menu and picking select a style. So here is the list of all of the Band in a Box styles available. And you can see there's over 6,000 to choose from. And in this list, you can just double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it will sound like. So for example, if I filtered the list to show jazz styles, I could sample some of them. some rock styles.
or some country styles. But I think the progression I entered would be very well suited to some funk styles. So I'll filter by that. I'll sample a variety of some funk styles. And I love this lash out style. You'll notice that in this column it shows the ideal tempo of the style, which for this one is 110 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best results. So I'll pick that style. So now there's a tap tempo feature in Cubase that I'll use by going to Project, Beat Calculator, and I'll press Tap Tempo, and then use the spacebar to tap in what I have in mind for this funk tune. One, two, three, four. So it's come up with 115.1 beats per minute. I'll round that to 115 and enter that into the DAW and the plugin. So now we're ready to generate the parts and there are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now I just want all the tracks generated normally. So I'll press the top generate button. So it's now creating the tracks You'll notice that right now there are some green squares and a blue square in this area, and those squares are empty. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation does take a little bit of time, so we'll skip ahead in the video a bit. So now it's finished, and these squares are now filled in with waveform icons, meaning they're ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample these tracks by pressing play up here. And we can now drag them into the DAW. And this can be done individually like this. But I'll undo that so I can show you importing them as a group by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW. And during playback, the chord chart also highlights the currently playing bar, in itself a great tool if you want to record your own tracks now over top of this. You can now mix the tracks, of course, add effects like reverb or anything we like. And as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes. These are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. This particular style has a bass part by Alex Al, one of the most sought after bass players in LA, who played in Michael Jackson's band for over 10 years and has also played with the likes of Stevie Wonder, Sting, and many more. And on guitar is Bob Lanzetti, baritone guitar Mark Lettieri, and drummer Spud Searight, all of whom are a major part of the New York funk and fusion scene. I'll do a few similar but quicker examples like this with a few different styles so you can get a sense of the scope of what you can do with a Band in a Box plugin. Here I'm typing in some chords like I did before. But this time I'll pick a hard rock style. Now I'm setting the tempo and generating the tracks. Now I'm dragging them in. And I've got some great hard rock tracks in my project.
Here I'm typing in some chords for a bluegrass tune I have in mind. Here now I'm picking a bluegrass style. And now I'm generating the tracks. And I've got some cool bluegrass tracks in my project. In addition to actually typing in the chords, you can also just open actual Band in a Box files. Either files you've created right in the Band in a Box app, or files other people have sent you, or even the demos that come with Band in a Box. I'm going to open a Band in a Box song file that features a country style that includes a soloist by the amazing Nashville legend Johnny Highland. So we now have the entire thing entered for us, the chord progression, key, form, etc. So I'll just generate the tracks. Now I'll drag them in. And here's a great country style with Johnny Highland soloing over the changes. I'll do the same file open thing to check out the demo for a Samba Brazil style, loading a song that features a style with the legendary Alex Acuna on drums, as well as the amazing Ramon Stagnero on guitar. I'll generate, drag the tracks in, and here it's playing. Let's take a look at the installation, setup, and initial loading of the plugin. The plugin works by accessing the real tracks, real drums, and other content within your Band in a Box folder. As such, the plugin is installed during the installation of Band in a Box. It can also be installed with patch updates for Band in a Box. In either case, during the Band in a Box installation, you'll reach the part where the plugin is installed. For the majority of users, Choosing the default settings during the installation will work perfectly. Nevertheless, I'll go through the steps here and explain what's going on. Here it shows the different plugin types that are being installed. The VST3 plugin is the one we're particularly concerned with in this video. We suggest that you use the VST3 plugin whenever your DAW supports it. A VST2 version of the plugin is also included and can be used with DAWs that don't support VST3s. There's also an AAX version of the plugin which is used with Pro Tools. By default, the plugin is classified as an instrument plugin, but there are also options to install it as an effects plugin. There's no harm in installing all of the primary plugin types, they don't take up a lot of room. For Cubase, it's best to leave the FX version of the plugin unchecked. Here it shows you where the plugins will be installed on your computer. The default Band in a Box folder is CBB, but it could be something else. This needs to be the location where you installed Band in a Box earlier. If you installed Band in a Box on a different drive, for example E, this installer would remember that. There should be no reason to change this. As for the location of the plugins, the default locations should be correct. This part of the installation is just related to VST2 and different locations where the VST2 plugins will be duplicated. The plugin doesn't take up a lot of space, so it's fine to leave these or remove the checkboxes, whichever you'd prefer. And that's it for the installation. Once the plugin is installed, Cubase will automatically find it during its routine scan at startup. You can open it by going to the right zone and clicking on Rack Band in a Box DAW VST3 Plugin. Now let's load up that plugin again and check out some of the settings within the plugin. The host is automatically set for certain DAWs which optimizes some of the settings for that DAW. There's no reason to change this, and Auto is always the best option. There is an option to highlight bars during DAW playback, which will highlight the current bar in the Band in a Box chord chart. Clear Renders will clear all of the audio files that are currently saved in the Band in a Box folder. 
This is something you need to be careful about to make sure you aren't deleting audio that other projects may still be referencing. To be safe, it's generally a good idea to only use this feature if you are completely certain no other projects reference these files. In general, with large hard drives these days, it's not likely that leaving the audio here will affect you, so if you're unsure, it's best to just leave the audio alone here. There is also an option to notify when generation is complete, which will give you a pop-up message with the generation time. At the bottom of this dialog, the four path values are taken from the installation where we specified the ban in a box location. Normally, this wouldn't need to be changed, but if it were pointing to an incorrect folder, it would appear red. Pressing Find Folders would set it correctly automatically. Let's look a little closer at the features of the plugin with a Moody Alt Rock project. To start with, it will be just like the other examples we saw earlier, but after those tracks are made, I'm going to switch some tracks and add some additional tracks, including a solo that will use the multi-riff feature. So here I'm typing in a chord progression that mixes pop triads with jazz and slash chords. And like before, now I'll load a style. I know I want this song to have an eighth note swing, so I'll change the feel to swing eighths. I want it to be around 120 beats per minute, so I'll choose T equals 120 under the tempo filter. Now I'll preview some of these styles. I especially like this mojo swing style. So I'll choose that and generate the tracks. As before, we'll drag from the blue square to make multiple tracks. Now let's listen to a bit of the song. This style sounds great, especially with the vocal ooze in the background, but I think I want to add a mandola. I'll generate an individual reel track in the Band in a Box plugin. To do this, I'll go to Select, Select a Reel Track, and I'll filter the reel tracks picker with a search string mandola swing 120. This means I'm searching for a mandola that plays with a swing feel around 120 beats per minute. I'll double click to sample this reel track. And that sounds great. Now I'll generate that reel track alone and drag it into my project. And let's have a listen. You'll notice that some of the tracks that we generated in Band in a Box have yellow squares to the right of their instrument names. This means that there is also MIDI data available for them. For instruments like guitars, this data is mostly just useful as a transcription, but we're going to get experimental with a layered bass sound that combines the original bass audio with a synthesizer sound that uses the MIDI from Band in a Box. I'll start by adding a new instrument to our rack in the right zone. This can be done by going to Rack Synth and selecting the synthesizer of your choice. I'm going to load a synthesizer called Mystic. You will likely be asked if you want a MIDI track connected to this instrument, and in this case I'll choose to do so. Now I'll choose a preset in the Mystic synthesizer called Phasing Lead and drag the yellow square beside the bass track in the Band in a Box plugin to the MIDI track that is used for the Mystic synthesizer. Now let's press play and mix the levels between the audio bass and the synthesizer. Not bad at all. But let's spice up the beginning of this song by adding a slide guitar blues solo. 
I'll move the mandola start point so that it doesn't overlap with the solo. In fact, I think I'll have the mandola come in a bit later so the song has some time to build after the solo. I could let Band in a Box generate a great solo by itself, but I want a little more control over it. So I'm going to use the multi-riff feature to generate seven different tracks of the same guitar soloist and pick the parts that I like the best. I know that we have a great slide guitar soloist that is around this tempo, so I'll select that reel track from the reel tracks picker. Before we proceed with the multi-riff feature, let's take a moment to show you how the different tracks are laid out within the plugin. We now have tracks of various types loaded in the song. There are three main sections accessible with the scroll wheel. On top we have the style tracks, all of the tracks that are specifically loaded with that mojo swing style. Then in the middle we have the special tracks, and we have that one special mandola reel track. Individually picked loops, reel drums, etc. would go here as well. And then the bottom section is the multi-riff section, which is what we just picked. For the multi-riff feature, it's most useful when you select a small number of bars in the chord sheet and generate just those bars. I'm going to highlight the first eight bars of the song and go to Custom Generate, Riffs of Selected Region. And when they're done, I'll just drag them in. Now we have seven instances of the same soloist playing different parts on separate tracks. If we tried to play them together, it would sound pretty bad, but the idea is that we can listen to them individually and either pick the one we like the best or piece together phrases from them if you want more control. For now, I'm just going to listen to them all and select the one performance that I like best overall. And I think this one is perfect. Let's listen to the whole thing now. Cubase has some great features and we're going to explore them by mixing and adding some plugins to our moody alt rock song. First, let's create a rack type reverb that we can use with some of our tracks that need reverb. Using one reverb plugin for multiple tracks will save system resources and will ensure that our reverb sound is consistent across the different instruments, as if they were playing in the same room. We'll start by right clicking in the track area and going to Add Effect Track. We'll load the Roomworks Reverb plugin that comes with Cubase and make sure the configuration is set to stereo. I could spend some time modifying the settings in the plugin, but I'll just load a preset called Room Oil Tank. I'll also make sure the reverb level is at 100%. We want the reverb mix at 100% because the instruments that will use this reverb will be sending their dry mix directly to the master fader and not through this plugin. Okay, our reverb track is ready, but we need to connect it to some tracks in our song. For now, we'll add it to the vocal, slide guitar, and mandola tracks. We can achieve this by selecting the track, going to Sends in the left zone, and selecting the Roomworks Effects channel. I'll do this for all three tracks. Now, I know that I want a good amount of reverb on our vocal track, but I want slightly less on my guitar and mandola. So I'll simply lower the volume of the sends on those tracks. Excellent, now let's listen to our song with reverb. It 
It's already sounding much better, but I think there's still room for improvement. Let's explore a very useful feature in Cubase, the channel strip. I'll click on the lowercase e button on the guitar track and choose Standard Compressor under Compressor. We'll need to tweak the compressor settings a little bit. I'll set the threshold to something around negative 27 dB, change the ratio to approximately 4, and disable auto makeup gain. There are lots of other useful effects here that you would commonly find in a channel strip, such as gate, limiter, and de -esser. You can also add plugins, also known as inserts, in this dialog. I'll add a plugin called Stereo Delay, choose the Stereo Spread preset, and change the mix level to around 20. Excellent, now let's have a quick listen to our project. The final thing that I want to do to this song is change the sound of the mandola. I'll add a plugin in the inserts section that will create a double tracking effect, Studio Chorus. The mix should be around 15. Thanks for watching this video on using the Banana Box plugin with Cubase. Have fun!